it's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Good morning, slaves. In the United States and Canada, February is celebrated as Black History Month where for one month of the year, tens of thousands of white elementary and high school teachers present awkward, obligatory, and kind of fucking racist lessons for their students on historical black figures such as Frederick Douglass and Martin Luther King. Who invented the air conditioner? A black man. And then explain how George Washington Carver invented peanut butter. So Dr. Carver's two dinner guests, Edward Skippy Williamson <laughs> and Frederick Jip Armstrong, two white men, stole George Washington Carver's recipe for peanut butter, copyrighted it, and reaped untold fortunes from it. Given the tense state of racial dynamics in the post-Ferguson United Snakes, this year's Black History Month has been more political than most. All around the country, black peeps are rising up, reconnecting with past histories of struggle, and publicly challenging the racist status fucking quo. Even the holy grail of American spectacles, the motherfucking Super Bowl, featured a halftime lesson on black history. Compliments of none other than Miss Black Bill Gates in the making herself, Beyonce, who performed alongside dozens of backup dancers dressed in Black Panther regalia. It was really outrageous that, uh, that she used it as a platform to attack police officers. Oh, fuck! Fuck me in the dick! <laughs> but while the right-wing corporate media endlessly debates whether Beyonce's performance was racist and the nuanced difference between the Panthers and the KKK, another story is going largely underreported. Climatologists are saying that this past year's El Nino was the strongest on record, and it's having devastating effects on weather patterns across the globe, whereas in Southern California it has led to heavy rains that have replaced the region's long-standing drought with widespread flooding. In Haiti, on the other hand, it has exacerbated an existing drought, leading to widespread crop failures and food shortages, which have put millions of people at risk of starvation. Every day is getting worse. It is difficult to grow crops because of lack of water. Many are malnourished and they don't have food. And the scale of the problem is even more fucking dire in southeastern Africa, where El Nino, combined with the pre-existing effects of global climate change, have set the stage for a looming famine of biblical fucking proportions, with up to 14 million people already suffering from food and or water shortages, and some experts predicting that up to 49 million people are ultimately at risk of starvation. Just let those numbers sink in for a second. Everyone is in hardship. We all have so little to eat because there was no harvest this season. Scorching hot temperatures combined with an almost complete lack of rainfall has turned large areas of the region into a parched wasteland. Decimating agriculture in South Africa, Lesotho, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Zambia, Madagascar, Malawi, and Ethiopia, where upwards of 8.5 million people are facing food shortages and 1 million children are struggling with acute malnutrition. This tragic situation is a bleak fucking reminder of the ways in which white supremacy is interwoven into the very fabric of globalized capitalism. While rich fucking countries in the West throw out an unconscionable amount of perfectly good food every fucking day, large areas of the world are starving to death in front of our very eyes. Capitalism is a man-made fucking disaster, which makes it that much harder for poorer countries to cope with changes in weather patterns, which are going to get worse as climate change continues to do its thing. While the scale and scope of these problems can be hard to wrap one's head around, they are ultimately connected to resistance to white supremacy and capitalism here at home, as they represent the global consequences of these hierarchical systems, projected abroad via imperialism and neocolonial trade policies. Colonialism is not a thinking machine, nor a body endowed with reasoning faculties. It is violence in its natural state, and it will only yield when confronted with greater violence. 